is Alicia from Nature Pacific and we're so excited to be here today with Cairns Regional Council and the first Buy Forever initiative. Today we're going to be talking about gardens for wildlife. We're going to talk about how you can provide a beautiful garden for wildlife. First of all, we're going to talk about what us humans need to survive. What do we need to survive? Have a think. Here's some clues for you. What do humans need? They need water. They need food. They need shelter. And they need clothes. These are things that humans need to survive. They're different to wants. What are some things that we want to have but don't need to have? Have a think. Here's some clues for you. We want pets, but we don't need to have pets to survive. We don't need a car. We could walk. We could catch the bus. We don't need a car to survive. Candy. We want candy, but we don't need it. And toys. These are something that we want, but we don't need to have. Now let's talk about what animals need to survive. I want you to think about what animals need. Think about what humans needed to survive. Here are those clues again. Animals need water. Animals need food. Animals need shelter. But do they live in a house like this? talk about that soon. And do animals need clothes? No. But what do they have to keep them warm instead? Do they have body coverings? What about fur, feathers and scales to keep them warm because they don't need clothes? These are the things that animals need to survive. So if you want to make a garden for wildlife, make sure your garden has all of these things for wildlife. So let's talk about what animals eat because human food and animal food are very different. It's very important that you don't feed animals human food. It can make them sick and it can give them disease. Let's talk about what kids eat. What do kids eat? Have a think. Let's see what kids eat. Did you say fruit and vegetables? I hope so, because kids should eat fruit and vegetables to make them strong. What about dogs? Think about what your pet dog eats. Let's see what dogs eat. Did you say meat and bones? That's what your pet dog eats. What about bees? What do they eat? We know that they fly from flower to flower. But what are they doing when they fly from flower to flower? What are they collecting? Any ideas? Let's see. Pollen is the answer. They collect pollen. And this is how honey is made. Bees make nectar or honey. What about worms? Do you have a worm farm at home or a compost bin? What do you put in your worm farm or your compost bin for the worms to eat? They're great at recycling. Hmm, what do worms eat? They eat all of our food scraps. 
the worms are really handy to have in the garden. My favourite snails. There's a clue right here in this picture. What do snails eat? Did you say plants and fruit? That's what they eat. And sometimes they do eat our plants. And sometimes we might get a little bit upset that they eat our plants. Sometimes some people use chemicals. This is something you can spray on your plants to kill pests like snails. But if we kill the snails, what about the birds and the lizards and the other animals that eat snails? Here's an idea. If you leave the snails, maybe, just maybe, the birds and the lizards and the other animals will come to eat your snails. You'll be happy and so will the other animals that eat those snails. Let's take a look at some other habitats that you might find around Cairns. There's lots of mangroves around Cairns. See these big roots? They're called aerial roots. They prop up the trees because they live in salt water along the coast near the beach. But do you have a mangrove in your backyard? Probably not. What about this one? This one's called the woodland or the bush. Lots of gum trees here. It's a habitat fit for a koala. But do you have a woodland in your backyard? What about a desert? Are there many desert habitats around Cairns? This habitat looks very dry and very hot. Well, Cairns is hot. Sometimes a bit dry. But you don't have sand quite like that. So we need to provide the perfect garden for wildlife. Let's do that now. I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. His name is Bastian and he is an environmental scientist. Here he is. He's got something special in his hands, a special box with a hole. He's also wearing some special equipment, a helmet, there's a rope there and there's a tree in the background. I wonder what he's going to do with that special box. What do you think? Let's see. Did you guess right? He's climbing up the ladder and he's putting it up the tree. I wonder what that special box is for. Who is going to make this special box home? What is this special box called? Any ideas? Let's see. Ready? This beautiful common brush tail possum made this nest box his home. Lots of animals like possums and birds live in old trees. When trees get very old, 100 years old, sometimes 200 years old, it takes a very long time for a hole to grow or develop. These are called hollows, and sometimes there's not enough hollows to go around, so we can help out wildlife by putting up nest boxes. Let me show you some nest boxes we prepared earlier. Here's a nest box fit for a kingfisher. See if I've got a roof to keep the kingfisher dry. And this small hole is where the kingfisher will enter and exit. Got another one too. You'll notice that this nest box is a different size and shape. So different nest boxes for different animals. We have so many animals in Australia that love to live in old hollow trees or nest boxes. Birds and mammals. This one's for a mammal, a very small mammal that glides and has a feather tail. It's a feather tail glider. So when you put these nest boxes in the tree, make sure your mum or your dad safely climbs the ladder and puts it up really high to keep those animals safe from cats and other predators. Okay, so that's the home sorted. 
but we need something to drink. What could we put in our garden to put water in for animals to drink out of? Got something here that might help. Here we go, here's a water holder that we can hang up high in the tree, again so the cats and other predators can't get to the animals. And this is great for birds and any other animals that can climb trees. Possums, maybe even a carpet python. What about the animals that can't climb though? What about a blue tongue lizard? You can't climb up high to get this water, so we need something down low. I think I've got something that will do the trick. Here we go, here's a saucer we can put on the ground. This is just a plant saucer. It's got some water in it, but I also added a rock. If you add a rock or a sturdy stick, this is a great little bridge, so small animals won't drown in the water when they go to take a drink. It's also really important that you clean the water containers so the animals don't get any germs. So give them a good scrub whenever they get dirty and fill them up with nice fresh water. So we've got our home, we've got our water, but the animals get hungry. We need to provide some food, but not human food. I've got something even better than human food for animals. We need to plant our garden for wildlife. Plant some native plants so animals can find their own natural food, not human food. That will make them sick. Plants like these, this is called golden everlastings and bees and birds love them. Bees and birds are also very important for the environment because they're called pollinators. The more birds and bees we have visiting these flowers, the more flowers and other plants we will have for all the animals, even for us. We need to put these seeds in something though. Something like this jiffy pot. So we will be doing this activity very soon if you want to collect these materials. You might need to do a shopping trip to Bunnings, get some of those native seeds, get a little jiffy pot like this and some potting mix, fill it up almost full but not quite, but you don't have to buy a special jiffy pot, you can use something else instead. You could use a paper cupcake holder or you could even upcycle a toilet roll. Just put some slits in the bottom and fold it up. And both of these are made out of paper, so you can even put the whole thing in the ground and they will break down. So we've got some seeds, we've got some potting mix, we've got a pot to put them in, but we need two more ingredients to make our plants grow healthy and strong. Can you think what they might be? Did you say water? I hope so, because plants need water to grow healthy and strong and they also need something from the sky, energy from something in the sky that's very bright and shiny. Can you think what it might be? Did you say the sun? Water and sun is what plants need to grow healthy and strong. So now we've got our garden for wildlife and I'm sure the wildlife will come to visit your garden. It's really important that you are safe when the wildlife comes to visit. So look but do not touch, especially snakes. If you leave snakes alone, they will leave you alone. Thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you had fun and we hope you learned something too. We also hope that you will create a beautiful garden for wildlife. So see you later from Nature Pacific, Cairns Regional Council and First Fire Forever Initiative.